football culture movement. What's happening, people? Welcome back to another episode of FCM. You already know what time it is. Sunday's finest. We're here to deliver mm. another audio visual experience for you. <laughs> Listen, to my left, I have a very, very special guest. He's making his second appearance hey. on the FCM. Hey. It's the one and only Doyle. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Not many two cappers around here, you know what I'm saying? Two about. cappers in one season as well. It's not even like, like consecutive season, the same I love season. It. I love it. You got some nice audio with the Scouse accent as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, also exactly, like, exactly. You know, none, of, none of these London fans, but yeah, real, yeah. real like, fans. These, these Manchester real Reds. These Puck and Reds, none of that stuff. None of that stuff. Only fan themselves a disappointed Scouser just after that. We'll talk about it. Good time, man. Good time, man. You can see that Doyle is in Cam seat. Cam will not be with us today. Day, mm. he will send his his spirit. He's with us in spirit. I think there's a few things. He's, 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 I'm glad he's somewhere. He's somewhere. Living Kobe, yeah. I'm glad no, real <laughs> man, <laughs> real <laughs> athletic <laughs> men. <laughs> real. I, I, I was so annoyed. I missed that last Yo, week. So I can't fun. lie. It was this close <laughs> I from felt saying, that through the screen. This close from saying black. But he thought, let me not. <laughs> let me not. He's like real. Hey, Athletic, no, of course. Is a legend. The podcasting Woo! Pepe is back as well from bing, his bing, injury. Bing, bing. The prayers healed the ACL. Of course, we've Come got on, the man. boy Fuad Kadani hey. back. <laughs> Even I was watching the episode last week. I was like, ACL? <laughs> yeah, just a knee strain, from, people. For context, not... from context, this guy messaged us and he's like, I can't move my knee. Hey. I won't make it. And in my head, that means your ACL, Bro, your MCL is good. Sunday, I could not move. Monday, I could not move. Monday, I went to the doctors. He said, yo, don't worry, big man. It ain't no ACL. It, at your age, you feel some strain sometimes. You overwork your old body. I, I went, guarantee hey, it was his fault. What? I guarantee it was all your fault as well. I seen 100%. how you play football, lad. You just be running at everybody Bro, with limbs everywhere. I'm not kitten. joking with you, Doyle. When I say, yeah, the way I played football up until, what, 25, 26, that has fucked my body yeah. moving forward because it was just too... Be you, a, you know how it is. Like. Be <laughs> Too gung ho, bro. Yeah, yeah, Listen, but no, man. no, we've got a good episode ahead, man. Let's Obviously, get production's not here as well. Myself, the host of Most Maze. Um, listen. You this... know what's funny? United fans thought they were going to lose, so they thought, yeah, man, let, let, let's skip the episode. Yeah, this yeah, week, yeah. No, we're not I'm watching them. Episode. I'm watching them. No. <laughs> Fam, look at this. Bogle, bro. You see this? What happens with Chelsea? <laughs> Hey, by the, the way, context, by the, the way, context. people, we are watching, we're watching the, the game. Spurs game in the back and we've got the Chelsea game in the back and Chelsea were 1-0 up, but... And now it's 1-1. <laughs> so if you see some us getting distracted a little bit, there is reason. Like, we're going to keep it professional, but we're, we are multitasking. But listen, let's get into it, man. As is custom around here, if your team went out and did what needed to be done and delivered, got the dub, hold tight the three-point collectors, wherever you right. are. Wherever you are, hold tight you. Oh it my gosh, no post as well. Easy. Um... Hold tight the participants as well. Obviously, it's um, two teams to play a game. But yeah, let's go into this big game. Let's go into this big, big game. Because for <clears> me, what I loved about it was all week, there was loads of conversation about United's lost to said Chelsea, the 4-3 loss. Mm -hmm. um, and just this whole thing of, Thunder doesn't strike twice. United yeah. are not doing that again. Liverpool are coming to deal with United. Mm. And for majority of the game, you thought second one will go in now. Yeah. Second one's not going in. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Are United gonna do what they normally are, do? Are United gonna Are they are they gonna jam their <laughs> way through another? Honestly, it was like first half you almost felt like Liverpool were in first gear. Yeah. But still could have been out of sight four There's or five minutes. Yeah. everywhere. Liverpool were immaculate, lads. We Bro, were it was, fantastic. Yeah, it, it almost seemed like a genuinely a training ground exercise of attack versus defence. It was like I think they finished the half without getting a single yeah. shot off. We had I'm sixteen shots mistaken. in the first half to a zero from Man United. This Their is first shot Liverpool on target was the Bruno Fernandes. Yeah. Bro, Liverpool are the away team here. Yeah. Yeah. Take into yeah. account what we're saying here. OT. OT yeah. zero shots at half time. I mean the setup from Ten Hag for that first half was, honestly, as much as I know we've come on here weeks talking about players and yep. certain guys aren't performing and they need more desire. I saw Leah saying last week, that is on Ten Hag. I'm sorry, you, there is no way you can come to a home game against Liverpool in that manner and 
play that scared in my opinion it was it was actually embarrassing it was strange though lads because he didn't off. set up like that he set up with four attackers on that pitch to come at us but he just left so much space in the midfield that we exploited Swamped it Swamped them it's Endo and Maher were having a field day Maher was brilliant again yeah. today I know we drew but he was wonderful he's done another yeah. masterclass mate he was turning midfielders inside out finding pockets of space lofting the ball over the top he was brilliant and again it's what do I just said just to echo it it was the tactics were poor. Even going into the second half of that game, Liverpool started very, very well. In fact, we literally said, as we conceded that goal from Man United, we are so in control. And literally, as that second, the sentence rolled off the tongue, mate. Bang. Kwanzaa, yeah. Bang. He's, he's had such a wonderful spell at Liverpool and is so talented. He is. He's an exceptional talent. But he's just had a really crucial mistake in his game there, lad, which yeah. is just so disappointing for the lad. Yeah. But he kicked on after it. He played all right. But they, to be honest with you, it's Liverpool again. We yeah. just defeated ourselves, lad. That's what we just done. The thing is, with Liverpool this season as well, there's been this whole notion of, you know, concede the first goal and it's like, it'll kick in. Yeah. We'll, it'll, the way we get it over the line will kick in. And like, that works to a certain extent. And then after a while, you can get caught out. Yeah. And... You faced no shots until Bruno. The most, by the way, the most Bruno Fernandez goal you will ever see. Bro, XG brilliant. of like zero point zero zero one. Oh my, no, just, bro, it's the most Bruno Fernandez thing yeah, ever to yeah. drop. What I would say was arguably one of the most Hall of Shame performances it's in that terrible. first half. It was just something. like grenade launching at a level that we've never seen. And I always try and like, you know, give him the benefit of the doubt. And I can see the idea he's trying and the bravery of that pass. You have to respect clap. it. Yeah. But this brother was a, a, the definition of a loose cannon. Yeah. Bro, it was despicable. And then in the second half, when he scores that, you're just like, of course. It's just the most of Bruno course. Fernandez yeah. thing ever, isn't and it? You're saying that though. Casemiro, same thing. It's such a Casemiro <laughs> performance now to just be smelling up the place. And then he has the header to, I can't remember who it was. That should have been a goal. Yeah. That he, perfect set up. Perfect set. Even, perfect even that crunch and tackle at the yeah. end to stop the yeah, counter yeah, yeah. at the last minute. Yeah. I went, bro, only you drop a yeah. stinker like that and then and just then give do one moment of. This is why we like And this you, is the problem with Man United. It's, it's, I, I tweeted that United, United are an interesting case study for football because they proved that hate, hate <laughs> alone can overcome tactics, can overcome superstitions, can overcome structure because all they play for against Liverpool at the moment is hate. I think it's what? Is that three draws? No, it's them? a draw, it's a loss and another draw. I agree with you, but also I just can't, I can't get that first uh, half out of my mind. We scored. We had so many chances. If Liverpool score one of them chances, the it's game is completely different. Yeah. So I don't feel like Man United did a, a wonderful comeback and they did the the built uh, they broke Liverpool down and you know we crumbled. It wasn't like that. Mm. We give the game to them with a young, inexperienced defender mm. who's passed the ball to uh, Bruno Fernandes, who's done a wonderful finish. Mm. But it wasn't. It wasn't beautiful for Man United. It was still no, terrible. It was horrible. No, United they just had two beautiful goals. Yeah, Colby Manu, wow. Yeah. What a, like, in, a incredible. First, game at Old T first goal at Old Trafford as well, I believe. Like, wow, bro. what a goal. M like Makeda S. What a goal. You see when... That's what we said. You know, we literally said Makeda. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly the, what we it's said. The same, <laughs> bro, the same rip in it. It's, it's, it's the fact that it's on the half turn as well. Yeah. He, he made his, was it first start earlier in the season against Liverpool. And I remember people thinking, oh, he'd been thrown in the deep end mm. a little bit. Bro, that was a coming out party. And then since then, he's taken to Premier League, first team football, international football, like a duck to water. Yeah. Today was another one of those moments as well. And I noticed in the first half, Gary Neville kept trying to dig him out for um, his movement and his mm. positioning. And that's where I was kind of like, bro, this is Ten Hag set up. This, this isn't on Kobe Manu. Yeah. But that goal there just tells you how special this kid is, bro. Like yeah. that for me just kind of signifies everything he's kind of been about, the quality yeah. of it, bro. No, he, supreme, he's, he's supreme a, talent. That's what Liverpool missing right. from that game. We needed a finish like that. We needed somebody to yeah. step up, take ownership, and go right. I'll bury this. Yeah. You know, let's 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 stick on Liverpool for a little bit right? because the way before this game, it was looking like the team that manages to see out the finishing line in the best form will win the title. Right. We now have a situation where you've dropped points against United. It's not the end of the world, but. With the performance you've had recent, the performances you've had recently, where to your own admittance, it's been like, oh, we could be a bit better. Yeah. Does it now start to feel a little bit like squeaky bum time? Like, oh, we can't afford any more slip ups now. We actually have to win all of our games. We can't have another game where we fail to 
take two, three, four charges in the first half anymore. Like, how is the feeling from a Liverpool perspective after that game? Awful. We have not performed particularly well all season, which is crazy, right? Because you know where the top goal scorers in Europe? Isn't that yeah. mad to think? We have scored more goals than anybody else in Europe, but we are second in the, in the Premier League by goal difference. It's crazy because we make mistakes, lads. So, yes, going into these next fixtures, I am worried about every single one considering that we don't look convincing in any of them. But we have been getting over the line and that's something that Liverpool have been doing throughout their history, mate. So, am I worried going into these next eight games as a Liverpool supporter? 100% yes, but also... Arsenal have got some dis- difficult fixtures going in there, you know. Yeah. And Liverpool have got possibly their hardest fixture out of the way so far. The next one for me is Aston Villa, second to the last of the game. It's second to the last game of the, of the season. That's a difficult one away as well. But this one, yes, we've dropped points, but we are still top of the league. When was the last time someone won on a goal difference? Uh, yeah, that's a good no, question, actually, isn't it? Let yeah, me you test you. That, that un- you'll find six season. I will actually find point Arsenal, Arsenal top of the league. league. What? Arsenal top of the league. The like goal difference. difference. Yeah. Uh, anyone in the comments? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone in the comments? Tell me the last time someone won by goal difference. If it was in the, the Man, Man United Man City one, then I'm 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 mistaken. <laughs> but I think that was one point, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and yeah, if yeah, scored that last minute winner, that was one point, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Tell me when that's happened, because don't count your chickens, yeah, genuinely. And I'm not saying that Liverpool are going to go on all to win it. I'm not saying Arsenal are, I'm not saying City are, but you cannot count chickens yet, lad. It's goal difference. We're still on 71 points, and they're still on 71 points. They've got to go to United away second to last game of the season. They've got to go to Spurs. They've got to play Villa. These are difficult fixtures for them to go to, and I don't see Arsenal being immaculate. I don't. (laughs) But and I don't. This, I do see City doing. It. I do but, see City being immaculate. I thought, and I, I, I just want to. It's not their that. fault. It's not Arsenal's fault. I'm sorry <laughs> to take over. Yeah, it's not your fault, Arsenal, that I can't see you winning the league because the last twenty years you haven't shown that you can. And it's not City's fault that they're getting back to win it. Wait, I though. think I think there's mixed views in the chat. I'll probably have to check it, but goal difference was 11, 11 12 was goal difference. Was right? it? Yeah. Yeah. I thought okay. My bad. My bad. But yeah. Okay. Last time. When was the time before that? Probably never happened before that. Exactly, it's crazy. So I'm not really counting on the goal difference to win the league. I don't think that's mm. going to be the defining factor. I think it's going to be the points. And it's looking, looking now, we've got to hope yeah, that was, Arsenal was. was goal difference. Yeah, was. My bad. That's good Both my bad. had 89 points and then well. Man City had 64 plus, United had 56. Yeah. Wow, goal difference. That could mm. win it, you never know. But I doubt it, I really do. With all these teams going into these heavy, heavy I pressurized thought, The one thing pitches. I will say about this Premier League race, I think it, it will be whoever wins it i think it'll be the toughest one they won so in essence uh, city i know you guys have pushed them to 99 points yeah, 100 yeah, yeah. plus points but i think if pep wins this one he will say this is the one he's most proud of because of these other the two almost teams that are really neck and neck with them and mm. competing i think liverpool you have the clock last rod that's the reason why it will kind of mean the most to you. Arsenal, of course, 20 years. And as we said, I think their running towards the end has been a little bit more difficult. They're, they're still in the Champions League as well, as well as City. But I think if they win it as well, they will look at it as like, hold on, we had to overcome Liverpool and City Absolutely. to win it. So I think in that kind of aspect, it is the toughest title to win in a while. Yeah, I as well, say. like, I mean, doing your fourth in a row, like to come and it bounce back and do that. that it, it ain't never easy. happened. It's never ever happened before. It's it's not an easy thing. Oh, Spurs have come scored. on. Spurs have scored one nil. That oh, must be nice. Yeah. Um, but what 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 for me <laughs> is like super interesting. All of this is you see when you were talking, it took a while for you to then go back and say mention City. Yeah. City are in this weird place where like not they've become a dark horse, but everyone's sort of like well. I mean, we spoke last week and Cam was like, he doesn't see City doing what they see City do. And of course, we will talk about their game um, before we finish here. But yeah. it's almost like City are a little bit kind of been, not forgotten about, but it's kind of like, well, you're a few points behind. So, but Do you know what it is? It's the inevitable, everybody's waiting for City to drop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you've done it three times in a row. No one's done it four yeah, times yeah. in a row. There's no way you could do it. And the fact that we've seen like a few hiccups in some of their results, you kind of think, oh, can they be got at this year? Yeah. Also, I think Liverpool and Arsenal have actually shown that they can compete better, yeah. if yeah. that makes sense. So you could say it's e- 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 it's uh, looking like they might drop it. But for me, I don't think City, City, City. ever, ever fan. rule City out. And mm. if anybody watched the Netflix documentary that came out this week as well, Hell no. that has just given me a little bit mm. more... Um, knowledge of the experience in that dressing room as well. The the amount of leaders there are in that dressing room. So you think it's okay? for me, I, bro, <laughs> you think it's okay? I you think this is normal? You think this is, this is normal? This is you think this is normal? Wow! 
What? Wow! <laughs> not my team. Not Yo, my team. What, bro, when I tell you, there was, the a, Ruben Diaz, there was a Ruben Diaz team talk that had me ready to run yeah. through the wall as well. I can't lie, bro. <laughs> I'm not ruling City out at all. Oh, no chance. Man. As a Liverpool fan, lad, you can never ever get them out the back of your mind. And this is why I'm not disrespecting Arsenal. Like, Arsenal <gasps> are playing the best football in the league without mm. a shadow of a doubt. They are the best team. Better yeah. than City, better than Liverpool. Mm. They are. But I've just seen City have better teams in front of them and still win. That's what they do. Yeah. They are the Sharks. They mm. are the professionals they do this is what they do this yeah. is who they are and honestly like it's disappointing for me as a Liverpool fan to not have a gap against them we need some leeway we need breathing space against City mm, yeah. whereas I do feel like Arsenal have shown us that they can drop points it's not even I'm not trying to be disrespectful I'm just going off history because there is no way whatsoever to tell who's going to win this title race there isn't all we've got is past history that's it You can, if I tell you now who's going to win the Premier League Genuinely, I'm not even joking. I couldn't tell you. Who's gonna win the week Premier League? To week, it's know. changing. You can't. You week can't week be football experts. We're not. We're not that yet. We're just yeah. three lads <laughs> talking about football that <laughs> love it very much, right? But if you ask football experts, managers, whoever, they won't be able to tell. Even though Arsenal are playing this wonderful, wonderful football, it's still incredibly difficult to tell. Yeah. So I'm not sitting here thinking Liverpool are completely out of this because there's eight games to go. We're still joint top of the league. We can still win things. Mm. We are that team. We have a good run of fixtures. They've got difficult ones too. It's do not you, over. What, do you, Sorry, Fred. What, what I would say is, we've you've got what, seven games left now. Is it? Now we uh, do. Yes, you, yeah, we do. Yeah, all of us do actually. Sorry, yeah. lads. Yeah. yeah. So now that it's seven, what I would say is, I have this massive thing of like timing your runs and timing how everything goes. Oh. The yeah. fact that you've got the draw now is almost like a kick up the backside to be like, we can't afford to do that anymore. And I think it was it was it you guys a few years ago when. With cities like you had to kind of do that ten game stretch, fifteen games all the way, and it's like fifteen games. It's yeah. too much to keep up with. Whereas if you have that blip and it's still in control, you can kind of like get back on the bandwagon and, and keep going. With yeah. Arsenal, the the thing with Arsenal is Arsenal playing the best football. Their performance, which we'll go into um, after we talk about City, was where it needed to be. They're now fighting this ghost of we can't affect, um, we can't afford to have a December period again, mm -hmm. and we can't afford to have what happened last season. Yeah. So they've got their own things they're worrying about. For for you guys, I guess, I guess it's about can you handle the emotion of this now? Because ultimately, it it's Klopp's farewell. There's gonna be emotion there. We don't know what's happening with Salah next year. That plays a factor in like all of. There's so many little subplots. With, you mentioned Quanta today. He's now got to get back to a place where, you know what, I need Confidence. to perform. There's so many things with Liverpool where it's like, can they manage all of that? I haven't heard Klopp's um, press conference, but mm. I'm interested to know whether he was spiky or not, yeah. because that will add something else to it. Um, of course, you don't have to worry about playing against Bayern Munich in the Champions League, which might probably be easy for Atlanta. Arsenal. But even that in itself, like it could be tricky. So this is where... For me, like, I, I honestly couldn't tell you where the league is going because you, there's just so many factors. Yeah. But what I would say is people at Gakpo, people at Gakpo, like, bro, this is the time where I'm sorry, mm. if, like, with, like, the six men, you have to come and deliver now. Yeah. We need backup. So they we had actually Harigi, need backup. When we had David Harigi, yeah. come on, we need the backup. in that game right there and get the, get the goal. Jota's injured and that's the man that we are so desperately missing in games like that. He comes yeah. on there, yeah. When it's second half, and he finishes the stages, and he scores the, the second goal. Jota sub yeah. not happening. He wasn't on the bench. Because he's injured. But the thing is, do you know what's so great about Jota? Jota held up his end of the bargain this season. Yes, when he when everyone in. was injured, he Most said, Saleh. November. I'm, put on me, I will do it. Yeah. He's injured now. Gakpo, can you come and help the rest of the team, please? Mach is doing more. Nunes, like can you finish your three yard chances, brother? Come on, man. Honestly, like, I'm trying ourselves. to get you out of jail. Know, <laughs> you ain't doing yourself that, no favours. He's had a brilliant season as well, though, lad. It, it, like, this team, I'm proud of them, lad. I'm not going to sit here and be frustrated with them because I'm absolutely so over the moon But how, how they've performed, lad, and that the fact that we're still in this title race and we are top of the league, joint top of the league, the fact that we're doing this right now is incredible, lad. It's incredible. I'm still over the moon. But so I'm not going to you... be disappointed and sit here and go, oh, it's over now because they proved me wrong so many times this season yeah. already. Yeah. They really have, so... I think we, I, Liverpool can still win this league. I mm. still believe they can. Do you, do you look at this game, though, in terms of how it played out? At the end of the season, if you don't win the title, is this one of those games that you look back on and say, fuck, that was the one that cost us? Yeah, we've only got ourselves to blame. Literally, yeah. the, only the only team Liverpool have to blame for not winning the league is Tottenham and Liverpool. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> 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 it's, 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 it's the referees, like them gang of Muppets, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, that's game. so uh, yeah, you know what I mean. So if Liverpool lose the league, 
that's what it is, lad. Yeah. We've shot ourselves in the foot a few mm. times. We've lost points when we really shouldn't have. Like in the Luton game, for example, Nunes had a chance when he was yeah. two yards out, like what you just said, and he yeah. missed it, lad. So mm. could have won that game. Mm. We had the games against Arsenal where we hit the post and the crossbar in the last few minutes. Like, we've only got ourselves to play. That's just the way it goes, lad. And this is football. That's why I've seen so many Arsenal fans right now. Please don't do it. Don't fall into this trap saying you deserve to win the league. Nobody deserves to win anything until the final day on the final whistle. Mm. And where you are in the league is exactly what you deserve in football. Mm. That's it. And it doesn't matter how wonderful you play. I watched my team play the best football I've ever seen in my life and may ever see. And it still wasn't enough to win the league. And that might be you this this year, guys. And that's okay because you'll kick on and win it the next year, maybe. But don't count them yet. It's not over, lad. Simple as that. <laughs> before, um, before I read some super chats, go and smash the like button. Production, I, I would love to get a poll of who the, the chat think is most likely to win the league as of things right stay okay, now, because okay, there's a lot of things going on where it's like, it's over, it's yeah. over for Liverpool, it's over, which is really interesting, but make sure you smash the like can button. We, I'm gonna, gonna do some super chats quickly as well. Can we, just before that as well, yeah. can we touch on the wan brain dead moment at the end of the game? Cool, so I wanna say because something about- I, I saw your tweet and it, it tickled me, I can't lie. Which one? <laughs> what, did, what did you say? I hate over- oh, Yeah, over, I hate over aroused defenders, man. Like <laughs> Over aroused? Yeah. That is Calm the first time I've heard that. Romero, Romero, <laughs> <it's> over <laughs> aroused. Like, like, why are you so like, like, those are personally my favourite type of defenders. No, but bro, and I understand what you're saying there. Yeah. But I don't even think that's over a route. That for me is the definition of a brain dead moment. And I know some people might say, oh, Harvey Elliott dived or whatever. I'm sorry. Do you him a think chance? sliding like that is mm. not giving him basically a, a hurdle to say, go there on, you go, trip man. yourself over. In, in that moment of the game, when you know Amrabat has just come on to shore it up. Ten Hag substitutions as well to just Boy, almost at the end. Boy, to just I wanna, be like, I hey, touch that. I wanna touch that. I'm Please. like, hey man, Ten Hag for me, this game was one of those. So, I'm sure if the United boys were here, they would be listen. having a field day, but you absolutely stunk it up today. Yeah. And wan Bissaka, your head should be on a spike Bef today. Before we go on onto the Super Chat, so Ten Hag, right? So I went to the, I went to the Chelsea United game, the 4-3 game. <coughs> In that game, which was a chaotic game because yeah. United seemed to fr to just be chaotic by his setup, by the way they play, yeah. by the purpose they got. Yeah. They're just chaotic. No sort of sense of structure, no sense of leadership. Just hell's let's kitchen, hope. hell's hope. kitchen. Let's hell's kitchen. Let's hope. Ten Hag, even when his team managed to do something, uses his own hands to mess up his team <laughs> against Chelsea. It's a game where they they seem to be in control. Do you know what he does? Oh, I'm gonna throw on Mason Mount, who's hated by these guys, and make it a pressure cook environment. They go in to lose. What happens? Mason Mount doesn't go out to his man. They lose today. Oh, we're under a lot of pressure, but we have some transitional threats. You know what? I'm gonna take him off and bring in Amrabat, so we have no legs in the middle of the park. <laughs> Are you taking the piss? Like being a bad coach is is that's fine, whatever. Yeah. But why are you intentionally making things worse Sabotage. for yourself? And Sabotage. then you, you have the, the, the gore to come into press conferences and say, I think we deserved more from the game. I think we played well. Are we, you mad? We're, we're playing the right way. Yeah. Brother. You don't even know how you're man. playing. Ten Hag stocks are falling by the week. So honestly, man. he is taking the piss. But with the wan Bissaka thing, the truth about that is that's a player that's over-reliant on his one attribute of that recovery thing. Voila. Yeah. And what Spot he doesn't realise is, Bro, we've seen this special move like four, five, six times. It's like Ray Mysterio going for the six one nine. Like, bro, we know what's gonna happen. Why am I gonna run this? That's why so, Harvey Elliott knocked the ball. Yeah, because he knew. Get me, lads. Yeah. This get me. guy he is knew. horny. Yeah, he's yeah. over around. <laughs> he's gonna commit. I'm gonna get the foul. So Wan Bissaka, that's duddery because boy, you jeopardize two amazing goals for your team. But let's go into these super chats because like, there's a can, few of them that had that. Quickly, quite give one yeah. shout out to a player as well, right. Willie Kamwala. Yes. <laughs> I know Kobe Mainu. Yeah. Hey, Kwanzaa, I like you as well. You, 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 I, I gave him his flowers a couple yeah, yeah. weeks ago, but yeah. Willie, after yeah. Evans went down, yeah. Varane went down, yeah. this is a Stepped big in. game to come and step up in yeah. as well. And I thought defensively, did what he had to do. I got him Did in my centre backs union. Yep. He's officially he's a joined, member. He's, joined, he's, he's a member. He's, he's a member. Let's, let's I, like let's I like it. I like that. I like that. Centre backs union over here, man. <laughs> what are you so <laughs> <more> <laughs> on? Come on. Hey, Kwanzaa's <laughs> there, man. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Conceded 16 shots in the first half. No, that's, that's the team. not his that's fault. The team. That's that's the individually, team. you see, you have to watch individuals instead of watching the whole team. He was all right. He was. He was all right. I like Mano was good. Yeah, Mano was good. Yeah, he was all right. But the thing is, even with Mano, what I liked about his performance was there was loads of the game where it was kind of just happening, like. 
He's always left on the island because Casemiro and all these guys. Yeah, throw, yeah, yeah. But he he did what he needs to do. But, but he's got more than one thing. That that lad that you just mentioned there was just clobbered everybody essentially. Just won the ball. Yeah, I get it. Real time. Yeah. But when you look at players like Quanta, he can clobber somebody, stand up, do a crew turn, lad, find a pass, loft it over the yeah. top, I'm and he can also big. give it away to Bruno. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I know, um, but that's what I'm talking about. When you're talking about these elite players. That's that's what I look for, lad. Oh my days, not lad. Not for it. What did I say? You, you literally what did said I say? it as well. I would he? Chris Wood. He's on fire, isn't he? Chris Wood. Woodson Wood. Listen, hey, production. In life. This is, I'm blaming listen. production for in this. Life. I don't know why production put us in, in this life. hole. As well, in life. <laughs> in why life. are Spurs in the title hole? Ramadan. This is why we're not winning no titles, man. Ramadan Benzema. World oh. Cup Ochoa, <laughs> relegation Chris Wood. Aye. You cannot escape. <laughs> Chris <laughs> Wood, oh, he's on double know, figures. That is he's on double figures for the season. See. Look, Chris Wood. Space, unchallenged. You doggy leaving his Chris man. Van Wood. der Ven leaving his man. Woody. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Composure. Yeah, every, everybody left their man. Look at this, composure. Whew. Three legs, <laughs> double <laughs> nutmegs. <laughs> anyway. Wake um, up! Uh, <laughs> man. Nuno of all people. This guy cannot win here. <laughs> Wallahi, he cannot win. No. If he does. Hey, <laughs> someone, up. Hey, someone committed hey. hard wood. <laughs> in hey, crazy. <laughs> no, you lot are moving oh, mad. man. You lot are moving so, mad. So, title favourites, we've got Arsenal at 62%, Liverpool at 11%, City at 18%, Spurs at 9%, which is really funny. But um, but yeah, let's go into the Super Chat. So, Adam says, United have that shit housing gene that allows them to always find a way of getting results. Them and Real Madrid are the two teams that have mastered that art. I so agree. crazy, isn't it? I yeah. absolutely agree with everything you just said because they're the only two teams that Liverpool can be 20 times better than and not beat. That's why three times this season, no, no draw at the start of the season, lost the FA Cup semi and... And they've probably faced in them in them three games over 100 shots from us. <laughs> I'm not even joking, lad. It's madness. Oh I my know, gosh. Kill me. We've got Garbo, Stoughton, which says last season, Arsenal were emotional. Doyle, could you say Paul are too emotional this season? So many games this season are showing it, in my opinion. I would say that Liverpool are on the exact same points as Arsenal, who you are saying are no longer emotional, so you've got to make your mind up. Does this points tally get from not being emotional, or does Liverpool's points tally get from being emotional? Because it doesn't make sense. I understand what you're saying. I think the, pref the team has got lots of new players in it that are unexperienced, and they're fighting against teams like Man City and Arsenal, who are wonderful competitors. And yes, they've struggled with their performances, but they're by no means too emotional. Without a shadow of a doubt, if we were too emotional, the second Klopp would have said he was losing. We would have spiralled down, and you would have seen that from an emotional club, but not from Liverpool, because they deal with that side. In fact, Liverpool are at their best when they're emotional. That's why we've got Anfield. That's why we have the 12th man. When you come to Anfield, it's difficult because we love it, we're passionate. I genuinely believe it, lad. Yeah. I don't. So you'd have to think about that question, genuinely. Is it because we're too emotional that we've got the same points as Arsenal or is it because they're composed that we've got the same points as Liverpool? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, Black Caesar 83 says, this is where Arsenal's better defence is going to matter. That's if true. If this current Arsenal go one nil up against Man United, they're not letting it slip. I agree. That's that's a great point. That's exactly what I would say. Le Arsenal at one nil at Man United at Old Trafford. They they stay resolute, lad, and they probably get a second goal later in the game because they've been solid and they don't make the mistakes that we have with a young, inexperienced defender like Quinta. We um last week you should have been there, man. We had a real centre half jolly up. We were like, yeah, man. Gabriel uh, uh, Saliba bro, I was, defending I was, I was like, I was like, partnerships. I, was like, I know you were like, Come on, yeah. Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bilal says, the way Doyle talks about football, he makes Neville and Carroll look like geniuses. Thank this, you. Part, this might be an Arsenal fan. Um, <laughs> we've got another one that says, Darren Campbell says, Leicester City, did they show, I think that should say show, did they show that they could win the league? Um, they went on a run. Leicester City went on a run and everyone was like, Hold I on. remember post-January yeah. it was. The they Vardy just, party. That was the Vardy party. They did not stop after that. Yeah. yeah, 11 in a row. It was the Vardy party. What was it? Spurs came close as well. Was it within five points? Yeah, I think yeah, it yeah. was. And yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what we're calling close in that race. So yeah. now they, they were gone. After yeah. January, they just locked in. Yeah. It was just kind of like, do you feel like there's going to be a capitulation? Which yeah. it, never, it never happened. Never really happened. No. CJ, AJ say, City fan here. Wanted Man United to win, but I'll take the draw. They did it for Manchester City United. Alexa played Jaws for you. I don't think that is not I don't think they agree with anybody. Man said, togetherness. <laughs> oh, kill me. Pushpaga Shatterji says, what is Spurs doing in the list of options for the title favourites? Hey. Which clown decided to put them there? 
production, not Leah's production, but production <laughs> did that. Um, Enigma says, though, we don't care. We're on top of the league. Say we're on top of the league. Don't project your insecurities on us. Our defense gives us confidence. We're going to speak about Arsenal on the defense, but um, let's speak about other title challenges in City, right? So now, Cam is not here, but KDB discussions have to be had. Mm. Um, 100 goals for Manchester City confirmed. I actually feel like Cam should be here because Jack Grealish crop would have been prop would have been. Bro, I was gonna today. say, this is this is the type of game. His, his performance was stellar. It was like everything that had been missing for so long of that control, intricate passing. He just seemed to click back into mm -hmm. it, and it's it's funny because in the last few weeks I've seen a lot of Jack Grealish stick in the sense of people like he's not exciting anymore. What's happened to him? He's a shadow of himself. That performance was why you never talk bad on good footballers. Like you don't just become rubbish. And I feel like performances like that in this running for Manchester City are gonna be so important. Yeah. He's almost unguardable in certain he positions. Looked like, he, he, he looked like in that game yesterday, he looked like Villa Grealish, I'll be honest yeah, yeah, with you. He yeah. seemed to kept picking it up on the left wing and just either left or right. I think that was one difference I saw yesterday was he kept taking the ball down the byline. Yes. Way more than he normally yes. would. It was always, you know, he's gonna shimmy yeah. shimmy, cut inside and either play in the fullback or the centre mid. And it was like, yesterday he was actually taking it down the byline, getting crosses in. And I was like, that little bit of variability to your game adds so much. And it kind of opens the field up as well. Yeah. But I thought he was brilliant. But then you always look at Palace as like City's bogey team. Yep. I feel like over the past couple of years. And yeah. when Mateta took that early lead, I thought, here we go again. Are we, are we going to have Here one of again. these days again type <laughs> and of thing? Andre Townsend, last minute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you just thought, literally, I felt like that's what Palace did. Kind of the start of the game and the end, end of, of the, the game, game, they kind of got their goals. Yeah. But in between that, they just had no quality whatsoever yeah. in the box or when they needed that kind of final ball, final finish to come off. And City, I think with City, KDB, Grealish, I think they were individuals that had good performance, but I don't think the defence is as solid as it was in previous years. And yeah. obviously with the changings around and everything we've seen this year in terms of Vardio and Akanji coming in, but I just feel like KDB really bailed them out yesterday. That was yeah. one of those games where you're like, ah, this is why Pep kind of has you in a cryogenic chamber and is yeah. bringing you out when he needs it type of yeah. thing. Cause games like that just remind you, bro, that, first finish that goal is was absurd, bro. Like he, normally that's a back post cross. Yeah. He said, fuck that, yeah. hold this. Yeah. Top corner. And the Top second goal as well. Bins. Second one was, I actually liked the second one a little um, bit yeah. better. I like the second just one. Just cause of the build up play, yeah. the way Rodri's left it off to him yeah. and he's had to make an improvised finish there. His yeah. body shape is not right to hit it with even, his left. Even the assist for Haaland's goal, but yeah. like yeah. he just kind of ran that show and you just felt like, as much as he was getting all the GA, if you like, yeah. Grealish was kind of the creative the machine. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that yeah. pre it. The pre like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So listen, Haaland back amongst the goals. So I think that was his longest drought in a City shirt as in well. So. How long has it been? Like, like four, four games? Minutes yeah. or <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that's a drought by his standards. Yeah. But. I think for City, it's like scoring a few goals, moving things along was sort of like, we need, we need to sort of like, you know, taste the blood. We need to be hungry again. Like we need to let people know that we're closing in on yeah. them. But what really stood out for me again, like we've been saying, who is going to stand up to the plate to drive City home? Mm. We saw Foden a few match days before and then he obviously got dropped for the game before. Uh, you know, he but, does you know, this, got your hat trick. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. You know how I'm a yeah, yeah. yeah. sit on the bench. Exactly. <laughs> it's and, the most and, and, and thing and in the world. Why, <laughs> and that's why it's so interesting to me because again, we speak about a team um, going for their fourth title in a row. We speak about, you spoke about the documentary. It's like, how do you continue to just keep using the soap to it becomes thin? How do you manage to get the best out of these players? Do you players? know how? And I give credit to the two academy youngsters, Oscar Bob and Rico, Rico Lewis. Lewis. Yeah. Last season, I remember when City were going through that kind of stale period in their first half, mm. Rico Lewis was a breath of fresh air that- yeah. Energy. He, bro, he just brought a spark plug that, I remember John Stones was out injured and he just kind of plugged in that defensive mid position. Mm. Then it was like, oh, Kyle Walker's out of form, go and slot in that right back. Yeah. And with that goal yesterday as well, you almost felt like, that is what they needed to take it 2-1, be like, okay, now we can play our games again. And mm. Oscar Bob, I just felt like similarly what Jack was doing on that wing, he's every time I've seen Oscar Bob this season, I'm like, why are you not playing more, bro? You are mm. clearly it's ready crazy, to be like a first team regular. He'd be starting for most Premier League teams in my opinion. But mm. I think those two coming out of the academy, as much as you can have the, the big guns or who are always reliable, Rodri, Foden, KDB, Grealish, Haaland, it's good to have those kind of backup dancers if you yeah. like who can come to the front and be like you know what 
Yeah. I'll, 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 let me play my part today. Yeah. And I think Rico Lewis in that game yesterday and last season, I remember he so the academy. Yeah. Credit to them. I think they're stepping up in it's moments. It's funny because for for you guys at like Liverpool um, perspective, um, in the cups and everything, your youngsters have yeah. essentially done that. But like we played Bradley. real youngsters. When I say Kwanzaa. youngster, youngsters, yeah. I mean like we played at eleven of, of kids that you've probably never heard of. Like that's mm. mad. Yeah. Jaden Dans and that who scored a lovely dink little finish. And yeah. I can't stop hearing about him now. Yeah, every, exactly. every Liverpool fan is like, oh, exactly. look how tall he is. Oh my <laughs> god, City's, City's models, great lad, because they have an incredible depth. And what mm. Pep does, yeah, he, he demands excellence from whoever starts in that position. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if you're playing Foden there, you better deliver a performance, lad, because if you don't, lad, Kevin De Bruyne is coming back on for you and yeah. you won't start next game, lad, and it gives them that motivation. It makes them want to push to be that player, right? Absolutely. It's a step up for City. Yeah. They're all immaculate football <laughs> players, most of them anyway. Like, yeah. so, this this terrifying football team, yeah. then, lad. They, honestly, I think they've got, like, they all play a similar amount of games, but they just rotate them like that. And like, now yeah. it's your turn, lad. Now it's your turn, lad. Now it's your turn. Yeah, That's why yeah. they've been relentless in all the competitions. That's how they win trebles. Yeah, relentless. The, the yeah. utilization is. You're right. That's why they probably pick up. And he's a genius as well, lad. Um, and he's a bloody genius. I've got to give Ortega a shout as well for that. Oh, little oh the little sk- where he croofed him, lad. Oh, nasty, nasty work. Edison, that. Who, like. lads, I can do it as well. <laughs> yeah, Watch it. Like, Edison hype. Oh, <laughs> Watch yeah. this man. <laughs> oh man. That's what the best managers do, don't they? They get players like that that even particularly. And that's never what I said. Them. It's similar like what um what you guys were with Allison and Keller. I think Allison yeah. obviously is so world class, but I always feel like with your number two goalkeeper, you want there to be as little gap as possible between the two because the drop off if you lose your starting player. I mean Arsenal, for example, last year when they lost Saliba yeah. and mm. Holding comes in. Massive. Bro, your whole playing style changes. But with Ortega, with Kelleher, mm. you're kind of still able to maintain that standard and just be like, you know what? We can keep going. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Kibio, we've seen life. this season at Arsenal just coming at left back. It's about trusting those guys and being yeah, able yeah. to, you know, can you step up to the plate? But I think they'll be annoyed at conceding those two goals though. Yeah, 100%. Cheap, but I mean, sloppy goals. I've been seeing City concede too many of them and wonder if, obviously we talk about Arsenal's defensive record and yeah. how solid that is. Yeah. Will those kind of cheap moments come back to cost them? And obviously, it didn't cost them in this game. Yeah. But you just worry for City defensively a little bit. Me, I think attacking wise, yeah. you're not worried about them. Creative, dominating possession, none of that. It's just defensively, you're just not as solid as you were. As you once were. Yeah. No. So like even like I know you. I know you said you bigged him up about his speech. Diaz for that goal, the defending is like, bro. I'm not used to that from you. Like hey, you're man. sleeping. We're having a rough year, Diaz. Diaz. Diaz Hive. This year's been rough and I can't back to you, man. <laughs> Ain't been easy. <laughs> Honestly, like, with, with, with City, like, City are imperious. They're a great side. It will now be about how can they see out the rest of their season, similar to, to things as well. But you know what? I actually really want to discuss Arsenal. There's so many things going on with Arsenal and I want to kind of get, like, the thoughts of everyone in, in here. So Just quickly before got Arsenal, though. Yeah. I was going to say, they got... Champions League midweek, if I'm not mistaken, City, City versus yeah. Madrid. Yeah, yeah. Madrid, yeah. So well, what did we say predictions? I think everybody bar me said, we said City. City. We said City. I said Madrid would yeah, go through. Said City. Who, who Madrid. you got going through? Madrid. Madrid, yeah. yeah. Madrid. I've got yeah. City. Yeah. I said I said that I've, I've got Arsenal giving Bayern a good hiding, like a good like a same. A, a Ars- same. Arsenal same. are gonna smoke Bayern and City are gonna get smoked by um, Madrid. Real Madrid because of their defense and also the revenge that they're gonna take on them. Lad. Yeah. You know when we were talking about the Man City yeah. thing, uh, the Man United thing, and the Real Madrid thing earlier, do you remember made that comment? The yeah. shit. Oh, yeah, shit yeah. houses. They are them. Believe yeah. me, lad. Doesn't yeah. matter how good I, you are, Real Madrid can beat you, lad. That's who they are. I weirdly think, yeah, where City's defense has been impacted, it will come back to haunt them in the Champions yeah. League. I think yeah. Premier League, they, I you still have back. them to win it, yeah. and I think they, their quality will still see them through. Yeah. But I think against Madrid, I don't know. I just feel like they might have something for them. Imagine but I, I agree with you. I think imagine Arsenal. This, right, City go out in the Champions League, yeah. And they, get, they don't win the Premier League, and Arsenal win the Premier League, lad, and don't City end up with an FA Cup. Don't do that. Don't do that. And just an FA Cup. When was the last time you seen City? That's madness to me. That when was the last time you seen City with an FA Cup? That's all they've got, lad. Nah. And I say FA Cup because they're gonna be Man United. Nah. That's madness to me. That can you imagine it's... City not winning anything? Imagine that because that's a possibility. It is. It's a possibility that people and don't speak about. The charges drop. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Hey! <laughs> Yo! Joseph! No! Joseph! Start the next season on minus 45 oh my points, lad. God! Hey! The summer everybody's been waiting for. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine. Harlan to Chelsea. Hmm. Hey! Harlan <laughs> to Spurs! <laughs> Bring him! <laughs> oh hey. man. Let's discuss Arsenal, though. Um. Arsenal and this, I think, let's call it what it is. The way Arsenal perform, 
this Arsenal team for me are going to be very, very about so long time. Um, I saw a conversation which um, they likened this Arsenal squad to an early Liverpool squad of when you made the one or two signings. Then it it's is, like, okay, it's how do exactly you then how do you then push it further? How do we get those few little signings that mean that we're solidified? I think that the foundation that they've built upon with Raya's going to be signed in a permanent. The two centre halves, as we say, probably the best partnership in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have fullbacks that are able to play at, at whatever time. Credit to Arteta, everyone was saying party, 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 party. He's finally realised that Declan Rice is combative enough. Sign Jorginho, the you're the there. Season. Just be there. Just have it. Even Jorginho, let's be honest. Jorginho yeah. and Trossard, the roles they played. They played exactly. When it was January, <laughs> when they were being signed, it was, they were. Let's seen get Mudrick. As lesser yeah. signings it yeah. was meant to be Mudrick and Caicedo yep. remember it was Raicedo yeah, we're yeah. gonna get that yep. but the fact that the role they've played yep. even Havertz being signed in the That's summer and, yeah. and I want to talk to you as yeah. well because I, I feel like what is it now he got a goal yesterday got a goal and assist. then got the assist as well and got I know Chelsea assist. fans are always saying like nah nah March he always does the, the little March run he tricks you lot yeah. but as a Chelsea fan, obviously yeah. now I think he surpasses his ta his highest tally for Chelsea yeah, yeah. in the league as well yeah. for goals and assists. Yeah, yeah. What do you make of this? Do you look at Havertz now and think that's a different Havertz to the one we had? Or it's, is it's this not... a thing where you actually have to hold your hands up, give Arteta credit for finding that role for him? Because let's be honest, start of the season, it was push him into the midfield, try there, maybe he can mm. use his height, his strength, and it wasn't really working. And then he said, you know what, I'm going to find a way to mm. make him work. And me personally, that's where I said, I think he could undo all his good work by trying to force Havertz in that midfield. Mm. He said, now nah, the number 19 is actually where I see him. And mm. the role he's playing there, he's playing it better than any time he's done it at Chelsea. But as a Chelsea fan, yeah. seeing that, what are you, what, what's your take on it's it? It's not a different Havertz. I think if anyone knows Havertz as a footballer, they know what he's good at what he's capable of. It's just sort of the consistency of that. But at Chelsea, there wasn't always a chance for consistency because he wasn't always just certified in the spot. Yeah, It's his highest goal return. But if you look at his utilization at Arsenal, it's very similar to his utilization in terms of minutes at Chelsea when he got his highest return. Yeah. So if someone plays more minutes and they're more comfortable <laughs> in the position, it's more likely that they're going to eventually get goals. Is this team better than the Chelsea teams he played in? You could probably say that in terms of the service and everything he's getting. Structure. The structure. And what he has more than anything, he's, he has the trust in Arteta. Listen, whether it's a stinker, whether it's a good game, I'm going to utilize you on what you're stronger. Even yeah. if it's not the same position, I know that you can cross the box, crash the box. I know that you can, you've can. you got this gritty side about you that you can win challenges. Mm. I know that if I need you to sort of slow play down and whatnot, you can do that. Arteta likes him as a profile. Like, so, for, for him to do this, it makes sense that he's doing that. And I think, I ha I worried when he was trying to shoehorn him in midfield and it was like, well, you're throwing Odegaard under the bus to do this, to do that. They seem to have the balance now. And let's call a spade a spade. Jesus has how many goals this season? Eddie Ketsa, I can't remember the last time I saw him. Havertz has done what he needed to do for the price tag he was bought in at. So credit to him and credit to Arteta, because that's a big risk, spending how much was it? What? 60 65 million? million, bro. 65 yeah, million? 65 million. So now it's all about how far can they go and see it out? Because mm -hmm. if they're to win the league, you'd say that the two Chelsea boys have played a pivotal part in it. Great. And what you have to remember is people laughed at when it was the Arsenal boys, Zinchenko and Jesus. What did they say? There's a reason why they got let go from City because mm -hmm. they wouldn't cross you over the line. So you're telling me they're going to take two Chelsea form boys, two former City boys. Two Chelsea rejects, two City rejects and yeah. turn it into a title winning team. Boy. That's got to put gonna, that down to you, the manager, lads. And, then you, and that's what I'm saying. You don't have to have yeah. serious conversations about Arteta, about not only his profile and the understanding, but how he's put this team together. Absolutely. Even with the whole Saliba thing, people seem to, it seems to be a distant member. This guy wasn't messing with Saliba. He <laughs> sent his, he sent his <laughs> guy to League One. Did you see his press conference yeah, the other day? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where he was like, oh, yeah. uh, when did you know this is going to be a good partnership? Yeah. When I sent him to Marseille, yeah. I went, hold oh, yeah, on, yeah, you yeah. sneaky yeah. my guy, don't He's try that. Away. And everyone was like, why is, why is Saliba not here? Why is not Saliba here? Integrate him back. Yeah. It, it seems to work now. What Arsenal have got is they've got a solid team. They play a very good style of football. And there's this just, belief um trust okay, the Jews, like, that's what they do yeah. they have to lose right you, you have to lose guys. that's what we did yeah. his first season Jürgen Klopp come 
uh, Europa League final, yeah, get to that. Don't win it, but we have that fire back to go mm. and say we can get to finals again. Look what the mm. Klopp's done for us. We've got that energy. Get to another final next year, Cup League Cup final. Lose, mm. it's all right. But we keep going, lad, and that's what they needed to do. They needed to have the sting of defeat so mm. that they could build the fire in the belly to win the leagues and yeah. win the titles. Still haven't done it yet, but they're by far the best. But I mean, if, league, but I mean, when Arteta took over, I don't think. I mean, you would have seen Arsenal kind of returning to some capacity. Wait, do you remember? What, but, do you remember? But, what I mean, now were? they're in a quarter final against Bayern Munich, yeah. where I think, from what I'm hearing, about seventy percent of people I'm asking yeah, are like, gonna... Arsenal are going through. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm like, do you see how the narrative has completely changed? Now they're competing with Liverpool mm-hmm. and City as well. Because the show so us, that's like, like mm-hmm. you actually really have to give Arteta his I'll, flowers. I want to go. I want to go to that point. You've actually turned it around. And let's <laughs> let's built it. Arsenal fans will know, but let's take it back. When Arteta got to Arsenal, right? This was peak banter error. This was the sw- the swag swag error. It was the oh, bring it back. It was the the swag swag. I miss those days. It was the um um like a like a boom. <laughs> it was like a boom. What else did you have? Oh. You had flipping dance competitions. No, it, was, it was in the changing room. Laka boom. Yeah, That's yeah. What it was. You had the dance competitions <laughs> in the changing rooms. You had flipping. Maitland Niles didn't want to play in defence. Didn't want to play in, yeah, in defense. Yeah, Louise and Socrates. Socrates, what's that oh, one? Um, the Chuckle Brothers. <laughs> holding, doing stuff. Yeah. Think about like when Chesney United... smoking in the change rooms. Bro, <laughs> think of when United fans are like, we need a mass clear out. We need a mass clear out. We need a mass clear out. Arteta, in the space of how many years, when he came, he said, I wanted to change. I wanted to to, to change the philosophy. He beefed the club captain and got rid of him. But f- first things first, he went toe to toe with his club captain, and got rid of him. He's had to do so much to now be in a place where Arsenal are not a joke of a team anymore. No. You can't even banter with Arsenal because people are like, hold on, who are you talking to? Do you know what a team is? The fact that Arsenal at some point this season were saying um, stadiums are empty and everywhere we go. This is Arsenal we're talking about. We're talking about Arsenal at their prime Barcelona, like before like Harlem Globetrotters, before they get to stadiums, <laughs> like they, they've, they've won games. Yeah. For me, it, it's testament to like how far they've come. And even if they want to win the title this year, you know that they're going to compete. Now, for them to win the title this year, they have to, like you say, it's, it's time to lock in now. Mm. My, my, my biggest question Must. mark, my biggest question mark is, can they maintain and keep doing it? Because unlike you guys, they actually tend to finish their dinner. Yeah. This Brighton game, they showed that. Absolutely. Trossard came on, got his goal. Havertz did what he needed to do. Um, they got the penalty, of course, Saka converted. Now, you have to, you have to be at that minimum for seven games now. Yeah. It's a lot of concentration. There's a lot of expectancy. I think most people are probably saying that Arsenal are in the driving position, which is a situation that hurt them last year. So now it's like, can they do it? Yeah. Can they do it? And if they do, you've got to give credit to them. It'll be one of the- yes, That is it. That's one of the things. Whoever wins this title race, you absolutely fully deserve it and credit to you because it's one of the most difficult tight races in a long time. It's three teams competing with that. They've all had injuries. Mm. They've all had bad spells throughout the season, but we're all on 70 something points by this at this point of the season, which is mm. ridiculous. Mm. My, Arsenal, I without a doubt, I said it earlier, playing the best football mm. in the league. But when they've been on top, they have crumbled, lad. Mm. And they've shown it time after time, which is why, Unfortunately, the ghost of the past is haunting them all the time when it comes to fans. That's why rival fans are saying, you're not going to do it this time. You're not going gonna to crumble again, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, I'm worried about them, definitely. Without a shadow of doubt, like you said, they finish everything that comes their way now. And it's because of Arteta in January or whenever it was when they come back from Dubai from that break and he swapped Havertz over and went, right, you're, you're going to play this role now, lad. And now he's scoring bags of goals. They're unreal. How many goals have they scored? 27. How many have they conceded? Four. This is a terrifying football Still- team, lad. I'm not joking, like, credit I'm to them. I still got the <coughs> meat picks from Dubai, man, waiting to drop them. It's mad. <laughs> them Arteta ones. It's mad, lads. You, you know, in this... Stand this one again! <laughs> <laughs> he can't keep getting away with it! It's crazy, for, right, the, for, for, the, for the sake of balance here, yeah. I need to ask you something, because Go ultimately, on. we are bigging up. We are bigging up Arsenal, rightly so. Rightly so. But, what would be funnier? <laughs> Arsenal walking away with nothing this season. Yeah. The city situation of what you mentioned, of City just getting an FA Cup. Yeah. Or what else could be happening? Liverpool walk away with nothing as well, and Jürgen Klopp is just, yeah. Yeah, Jürgen Liverpool. Klopp just walks away with a, with a caravan. Xavi Alonso it. rejects Liverpool and then yeah. beats him in the Europa League final. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would be the funniest, from a, from a pure hate watch perspective, 
What is the funniest? Who's think, L is the I'm funniest? Right. It's I, gonna think be... I speak for all other 19 Premier League teams when yeah. I say. I know what going to say. Arsenal not winning anything. Yes. Would In terms of hate watching, yeah. would be the most poetic thing. For how obviously we've said, you know, Arteta's built something. He's made them competitive again. All to end up with nothing. <laughs> best defence, best centre-back pairing, new goalkeeper. All to end up with nothing. Signing of the season, Declan Rice, 100 mil. All to end up with nothing. <laughs> like Saka, Starboy, Odegaard, Captain, like Havertz, 60 million down the drain, all for nothing. Like there would be so many reasons as to why that would be so funny. Honestly, like, and that's just, obviously I'm a Spurs fan, the people will say, oh, you're hating, but I think you, you ask most other fan bases as well. They would rather see that suffering. I mean, if City lost, it'd be like, okay, oh, Pep, we can finally get at him type of thing, cool. Mm. Liverpool, it's like, oh, okay. Klopp didn't get his last start. Klopp going from cool. quadruple to just Quadru- the one. I can't lie. That, that, that would be a little fun. No, no, no. That would be funny. Hey, so hey, he said Xavi Alonso beating us in the thing. That, that's quite yeah. funny. Like, yeah. like, I'd be good to... But that is quite but funny. But I think like, in terms of the humour and like yeah. how the timeline would look. Said, oh, how, how can the best team in the league leave oh, with nothing? <laughs> that's why I'm telling it's, you. It's like, that, and that's why I hear what you're saying in terms of don't celebrate too early yeah. don't get too excited wait till that nail is in the coffin Lads, and then you can kind of celebrate as soon as that Liverpool game finished Ses sent us a picture with him with that t-shirt of Arsenal being top of the league again lad that's the type of stuff that we're talking about that's why people want Arsenal fans <laughs> to fail I'm from Liverpool I, don't, I didn't know many Arsenal fans come when I moved down here lad yeah. and I'm going to come here the amount of madness that I get thrown at me by Arsenal <laughs> fans is actually in, insane like and all I'm saying is don't count your chickens like you are fantastic but don't count them because as I said I've seen my team play wonderful football lad and get very high point tallies and not win the league so that's why it'll be hilarious if you do mess up this league but also for me watching City yeah Spend billions of pounds, lad. Yeah, end up with nothing, not a single trophy, yeah. and then next year the, the charges do drop. That's poetic justice for me, lad. That's beautiful. <laughs> Even if Liverpool don't get it, Arsenal get it, yeah. But then I have to watch. I'm like City, you ready? Come with us, lad, into the pits of despair. You've never been here, lad. Come with me, lad. Innit? That'll be great. I would love that. Yeah. We've got a few super chats here. So Oz says scenes when Arsenal and Spurs end with top four only, which is quite interesting because that's saying that. <laughs> If City win this league, oh. yeah, Arsenal, right? If Liverpool don't win this league, yeah, do you best not let City just take this away? I swear down, after having these seasons with these two teams and it being a three horse race and City just walk away with it again, I'll quit football, lad. I swear down. And if you're Arsenal fans, you better quit as well, lad, because this is, you best win, lad. You have to win if we don't. Can't have the evil of football winning again, lad. Listen, you got you got Saka doing Snickers adverts and Nando's adverts. <laughs> you better deliver that title, boy. That's all I'm saying. I just thought <laughs> about it genuinely, lad. I just thought about it, yeah. <laughs> the PR campaign is an overload, I swear. P- it's Pep watching <laughs> Liverpool and Arsenal work Ooh. themselves up, getting dead excited, lad, and then just at the very end, just takes away from both of us, lad. Oh, that man. cannot happen. It can't. Do you know, it's so crazy, yeah. We spent like 10 minutes just praising Arsenal. And, and they're just, and just the <laughs> Within three minutes, all the Arsenal fans are like, "We see the story. Yeah, 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 yeah. The true colours like, are brilliant, now. You're brilliant, but we hate you all. <laughs> Listen, oh, man. you can't say anything negative about Listen, Arsenal. Man. You can't. MCFC Solo says Asna and L- Liverpool are in. You are you are in control. Don't let us win four in a row this poor season. You must. The Sharks are full. Don't mm. let us smell blood. That's that stick talk. He's talking, he's sounding like Kendrick, bro. He's been there. He's yeah, he's like, if you <laughs> don't, said, it's just Big B. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like, if you don't, we will, lad. And he will. He really will. So, Arsenal, you better oh, do it, lad, if we don't. Please, right. GP says, Arsenal haven't, well, Arsenal haven't won the Premier League since 2004. iPhone first generation era. Was that even mm. an iPhone? Was he an iPhone then? I don't That's, even know if they were That was like green screens. I don't, even know, that was, I don't even know if that was Blackberry. That was, that was pre-Blackberry. Oh. That was pre-Blackberry, bro. Yeah, I'm not that was, that, was, that was iPod, iPod. Nah, that was happy slap days. Oh my days, happy yeah. slap days. Yeah, you, you you remember the Nokia what, Square thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that yeah, show? Yeah, yeah, phone, yeah. What, phone jacker? Huh? Yeah, yeah, phone the... jacker and then man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joseph Joestar says, though I'll take the point with a smile on my face, our running is very easy, unlike Arsenal and we're above City. Huh? Oh, you're, t- oh, so you're a Liverpool fan? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, lad. If you've got confidence there, Keep it, because I need it. Because I haven't got no confidence at the moment. Cause Wait, just... we'll hit the post as well. I'm telling you now, this guy, he's generational, look. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, he did miss it from two yards out, though. Yeah, no, but he's a player, though. <laughs> he's a player, he's a player. Wait, how does he get the post from there? Sorry, guys, one second. Unless he saved it. Rifle that into the post from two yards out, man. I mean, man <laughs> um, MG says, I'm a gooner and Cess is an idiot. That's funny. Now we've got Arsenal and Arsenal crime. But listen, speaking of Spurs, you guys are losing at the moment. Oh, no, Chelsea no, scored. No, 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 no. Don't do that. We're drawing. We're oh, drawing. It's one, oh, yeah, one on. Chelsea scored. No, okay. Let us. Noni, my guy. Thank you. But yeah, drawing at the moment. Um, so obviously, my people mentioned top four. Um, <laughs> I need the Fruid Kadani update on the race. <laughs> To Villa. <laughs> oh, the race to Villa. Yeah. Or the race to top four. Because Villa were in fourth place, of course. But mm. where's it now? One win in their last five, I think it is. Mm. Obviously, we went there the other week and <laughs> 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 they got dealt with. <laughs> but um, but now nah, it's uh, it's it's an interesting one. Uh, we've se- I feel like we always get this every oh, year man. where there's one team outside of the almost traditional top six that compete for the Champions League players. We had Leicester for a couple of years. We had a, do you remember West Ham a year yeah, or two ago yeah, were doing that as well? Yeah. And then they dropped out kind of the last couple of games. And I was looking at Villa this year to see how long can they keep it up. And credit to them, honestly, I think they've kept it up for longer than even I thought. But Definitely. you're starting to see some chinks in their armor now. And some of the goals they conceded yesterday, bro, were like poor, basic poor. centre-backs just leaving their runner. And Wembo's goal was just pure ball watching, if that makes sense. So yeah. it's like, Pau Torres, Carlos, take a good look in the mirror, lads, because... Today as well, this is almost typical Spurs again as well, because Mm. when we beat them, similar situation, we had a game in hand, three points on them, could catch them up, ended up getting battered by Fulham. And then today, got another opportunity at home to Forest, and we're drawing here at home again. And they could have easily been 2-1 up with Chris Wood there as well. But Mm. for me, I think in the end, I'm hoping we will come through and get that top four place, (laughs) purely because Villa are also looking like they want to hand it to us as well. But... Mm. If there's a reason we don't get top four, I don't think it'll be because of it. It'll be us doing stupidity to ourselves like this. How many games so, have Villa got a home left? Because that's a big uh, thing. A big factor for them is I if they're home. Check that um, for you right form. now. They are friend. brilliant at home, lad. They actually are. Aston Villa matches at home. They have left. Uh, Bournemouth, they'll be playing at home. Chelsea at home and Liverpool at home. Ooh. Three games. So Three they're going to lose one home. of them. So there's one of the games that they've lost at home. <laughs> Liverpool one. It's a Liverpool one. All right, we'll yeah. take that. And then Chelsea probably get beat. Uh, yeah, Chelsea. Chelsea. I'm expecting them to bop them. Hey, listen, man. But then Arsenal, there you go. So can saying, you do something for me? What are you want to? You want to fight with Arsenal? Uh, no. I need a draw. 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 A draw, a draw oh will be my gosh, that is that is too funny. Yeah, but they're um, still in Conference League as well, so I'm hoping that can kind of play a little bit of an effect on their mm. kind of league form. Top four has been like this for the last few years. It feels like teams are just what? like, do you want top four? Does anyone want top four? Because yeah. I'll lose if you want, bro. I say no problem. This every single Madness. year, bro. Top four becomes a race of the worst of a bad bunch yeah. the, or the best of a bad bunch Man. is always the one to get it if that makes sense and then the last person just goes oh I'm here how did yeah, that happen yeah, yeah. and they get knocked out of the Champions like- League in the first round <laughs> <laughs> what I would ask you though Fred, is, as a Spurs one yeah, how mm-hmm. do you assess the, obviously it's the first season under Ange how do you assess this season because obviously you have the sort of three months manager of the month people expecting you to win the league. Then you have this sort of injury crisis. Then you have this sort of moment of like, well, Ange is being stubborn in his approach. Mm. Then you have the players coming back. Then you have this sort of like, well, we only score goals in the second half. There's been like a lot of like, narratives and flows and narratives of your season. So like from a Spurs perspective, how do you assess this first year? And what is the vision from here? Because like, as you said, you've got Villa kind of dirting around a Mm -hmm. little bit. We've seen what happens with Arteta and Arsenal where like in space of three to four years, where you can go. Where was, where, how do you assess Spurs this season? And with what you've seen as this foundation, where do you think you can go? I think it's been the perfect reset, in all honesty. Mm. I think in terms of refining an identity, mm. having like an ethos that you play to and a culture, if you like. I feel like Ange has really kind of cemented that this year. I think we've had a lot of tests and moments where I've been like, now we're gonna see what this team is really about. Like you said, when we had that initial start with the 10 games, mm. and then we had that tough run of fixtures with Liverpool, with City, but we actually didn't drop any points. When we had the injury crisis, yeah. we didn't do as bad as I thought we would. People thought we were gonna lose all our games. We had players going AFCON, Asia Cup. So we've had our moments where I feel like we've been tested and 
we've always come out of the other side, I feel like sticking to our identity and mm. not as bad off as everybody thought we would. And I feel like starting this season, when you realise what Spurs were last year, losing Harry Kane two days before the season started, I don't think anyone could have predicted this type of season for us. You would have thought mm. maybe a, a, a Chelsea type season, possibly, do you know what I mean? Mm. But I feel like the way Ange has really been able to kind of grab this by the scruff of the neck and kind of make it his own, mm. I love that. But that that isn't to say it's perfect. Yeah. There's definitely still work to do. I think for me personally, defensively is where I look at us and I'm a bit like, we can still be got at very easily. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like any team at any level really struggles. A relegation team is just as capable of getting through us as Man City is, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I think that's a, a byproduct of how we play. It is. And for me, I think that's where I'm looking at Ange to see how can you tweak this and make it better. Two consistent things the balls into the channel with our high line the that seems to be the way teams just get in behind us very quickly and then on set pieces vicario being targeted uh, at the near post seems to be like a theme over the past two or three months so i'm looking from now till the end of the season and especially when we start next season how is Ange going to tweak those things because tweak those things we can become defensively resolute if you like and mm. that's the kind of evolution i want to see with arteta i think you saw when he came to arsenal that first year was implement his culture set the kind of the guidelines and who's on my side who's not differentiate that but then you saw progression every year whether it's the attacking play last year whether it's the defensive play this year so for me i think that's what you want to see from Ange. you've had a good year you've had a good window as well a lot of his signings have been very good as well mm. now it's what can you add on to that and i think this year if we get champions league it's kind of like a whew, this this mm. this was our target and and we did it mm. but we also want to push on from that so next year will be a case of can you really challenge for one of the cups yeah, you know what i mean so got a style now, the, I mean, yeah that's, that's we, what we, any good manager has a style that's mm -hmm. it really and Andrew's everyone's saying he's stubborn with it but that style is what's going to make them successful or not as well so if he gets the players that he needs to fit in the right holes to fill the right whatever mm. he, they will do well yeah it's just about developing a, a philosophy and that's what he's done i think mm. it's exciting to watch and he's a likable character this is a better looking spares than i've seen in a, in a while even yeah. though they're going to finish in a similar place you feel like their projection has gone in much better places, even though like, they had Harry Kane, which is yeah. strange to say, right? And, and, yeah, and it's mad because I, I look at our defence and I'm saying that's kind of like our weak point where we're conceding a lot of chances and a lot of goals. But that starting lineup defence has only been able to play together, I think, 11 or 12 yeah, times. Been, yeah, injury. a lot of injuries and things like that. But then for me, my biggest concern is actually the attack, where I feel like we don't have enough quality or x-factor players if you like. I think Kulusevski has been massively disappointing for the past two seasons, in my opinion doesn't really seem like he's going to be that player to really push us over the edge. Um, Sun Hyun Min has had like a, a rejuvenation season, if you like. But yeah. outside of those two, I don't know if I can really rely on like a Richarlison, a Werner, a Solomon, a Gill. Like those aren't players that you're looking at and thinking if you're going to go compete for things, that's the kind of attack you need. So for me, I think that's where I want to see what Ange does this summer in terms of attackers. Who are you going to bring in? Because we really need not only just strength, but we need depth as well. So yeah, what is the profile? So what what profile do you want from a striker? Obviously goals. Yeah, I said, I said I think Sun could still do the job for another season. Mm. For me, I think signing a, a starting left winger is more important than anything. Fine. Do you know what's? I have to ask you because you're here, Liverpool fan. Post club thoughts like who? Oh, obviously, nice. you're not getting a lot. So like who? Yeah. Who out there do you look at and be like, I would wonder. Actually, no. Let me ask the question like this. So much of being like a Liverpool fan is sort of the feeling, Liverpool, the city, connection. Are you willing to compromise that for like a top coach that might just be a coach only? No. Liverpool aren't that club, mate. We're not, we don't hire in professionals that are like mercenaries, that, like a Chelsea, for example, mm. who hire elite managers for two years and then sack them and get new ones. Yeah. We want someone to build a philosophy and a movement in the club. That's mm. the whole point of it. That's what you get fans behind. Mm. That's what it builds momentum. So for me, somebody like Almiron, that Ruben, who, who's, who's managing Sporting right now, mm. who's won the league for them for the first time in 20 years, mm. currently sits top of the league right now. Mm. He is somebody that speaks very good English as well, right? And I know mm. I'm not trying to say people that don't speak English aren't good managers. That's not what I'm trying to say. But I would like me manager to be able to communicate in every way possible yeah. that he can with his players and his fans yeah. and the media. Yeah, And I think he's well adept at that as well. Mm. Not my first choice, right? Because obviously Xabi Alonso fits the bill so well, especially yeah. with how successful he is at Bayern. At Bayern. But... 
you can't pick and choose everything, lad. And I feel like that Ruben Amarin is the best option for Liverpool right now. And I think the clubs have actually spoke already. I'm not quite sure. I've seen little rumours about it. Mm. I'm sad if I have a post post club lad. This is a really scary period for Liverpool, and I don't remember one single club that have had their elite manager leave and they kick on and do the same stuff. And I know Klopp's trying to set up for us to have that. Mm. But it hasn't happened. If you look at Chelsea after after Mourinho fell off, if you look at uh, Man United after Fergie fell off, if you look at them after Wenger fell off, lad, mm. it, it, it's just something that has to happen for you to find your, your next step in your next direction. So I'm not looking forward to that period. The only manager in my mind that I can think of genuinely that's uh, been successful after one successful is Bill Paisley. Bill, pa- Bill Shankling, Bill Paisley, and that's not football anymore, lad. Yeah, so it's a different time. Yeah. I don't know what Liverpool <laughs> are going to be like post post your clock mate but I do know I'm desperate to win this league just so that it softens the blow at whatever trauma I'm about to experience in the next five years you can years, hold man. on to it yeah, yeah. Right into that. Exactly. I, I, need, yeah. I need this farewell and also that second uh, Premier League really does look good on Klopp's tenure mm. that Europa League looks good on Klopp's tenure it's yeah. the right way to put the icing on the cake mm. I really, I, again I don't want to be sound entitled I really don't I hate the, I hate the saying we deserve to win no one deserves anything I said it earlier but I really I feel like Liverpool fans have been through so much turmoil in the last nine years when it comes to facing this Man City team and only getting one Premier League that we didn't even get to celebrate <laughs> I just genuinely feel like we absolutely we're, we're dying for this and I know Arsenal one. are but you're going to get it next lad you're next up anyway if you don't get it this season it's going to be the next two you'll get it it's yours it's going to happen you're that good I can see it but Liverpool this is our, our dying embers lad this is our last fight our last call and I'm aware that the other two teams are better than us I'm not mm. stupid lad I watch football too I can mm. see it but we still have that grit and that tenacity to get us over the line so that post Klopp is not so miserable and traumatic and horrible because it's gonna be anyway lad yeah. right it's just the way it is lad nah I hear it I hear it should we do, should we do champs and duds yeah let's do yeah. it <clears throat> send so, your champs and duds as well in the chat let us know we'll try comments. read some out uh, yeah I'm feeling to read some out my my dud this week is a continuation from a dud from last week um by Munich oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dudley yeah. Now, yeah, now it's like, now it's like they're, they are the, the Dudley boys. Like, this is taking a... They, they're going too far. Yeah. They're actually going too far. How can you... They're going too far. How can you be 2-0 up and then lose 3-2? Yeah. Like, peak, ask man. him... Oh, nearly happened to them then. I was about to say, ask Chelsea. Ask Man United, lad, didn't they do that? They were like... Three, yeah, 3-2 three, 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 up and then... But it's like, why, why buy Munich so bad? Because two goals give up. Why has Eric Dyer played more minutes at Bayern Munich than he did at Spurs this season? Hey, man. <laughs> Is that real? Yeah. yeah. That's why, there you go, that tells you why they lost Bro. these two lads. Right there. Two goals give up, mate. It's one of them, he's been sacked. What more has he got to fight for at this it, mo- mo- uh, momentum that uh, I've, Bayer have made? I've got a question for you. Mm. What is the worst effect? The two goals sort of like fall off or the Conte sort of fall off? Because they both have this habit of like, I'm when done. it stops working. I'm done. It just, <laughs> yeah. Who's who's is worse? Who's is worse? Yeah, two shots cool or Conte. Two shots. Uh, uh, for me personally, I like Conte's explosive exits because yeah, yeah, yeah. what he does is, whether it's at Inter, whether it was at Chelsea, whether it was at Spurs, yeah. he tells it how it is. Yeah, and a lot yeah. of the times, the fan bases might not like what he's saying, but to this day, I agree with his run. That was last year amazing, that he was. hit the nail on the head amazing. on everything and I was saying it we hate him because he's our gaffer and he yeah. shouldn't be saying this but he's right yeah. you, ain't, the same you ain't thing. wrong you ain't wrong <laughs> yeah. but you don't have to do that yeah, yeah. but even at Inter it was the same thing like he was saying yo I'm not being backed enough I need more money and Inter are a super club at that level where he wants that backing and Chelsea he wanted the same thing it's like hold on I seen Jose get money bags <laughs> I want money bags too nope so so listen uh, I, I like Conte's <laughs> explosive exiting style if I want Tuchel's one is a bit more goes out with a whimper yeah. and then I don't know it just all kind of goes south it's like yeah. a pop and then it goes right yeah. I'm, I'm finished now can't yeah. be bothered yeah. whereas Conte it's, it's it goes me. Me, 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 yeah. outside the door my duds this week I'm going to go my beloved Ajax losing 6-0 six six away to final within 66 minutes that's what you call yeah brother this season is the definition of one to forget, man. Yeah. The start, the middle, the end, the rivalries. They have been schooled at every level this season, honestly. Absolutely nasty work. Yeah. Nasty, nasty work. That's a good dud. Some people in here are saying 
dud for Dybala. I think he missed a, a really bad sitter in that game. Um, Roma ended up losing. Um, Wan Bissaka, they're saying dud. I'm gonna literally, I don't know what, my dud. Terrible that I'm gonna say this. Liverpool have. We had a dud, unfortunately. I lad. wouldn't even say Liverpool. I would. And I'd say we should have won that game. Mm. We absolutely had it in the bag. Yeah. We've mm. only got ourselves to blame. And it's going to affect our mentality going forward. And the mm. fact that we haven't beaten Man United all season. Ugh, it's a dud this week for me, lad, unfortunately. Think, for me, I think from that game, I have to say Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Yeah. 2-1. Game is there to be won. And you go and do the foolish challenge in the box. Booker uh, T. Spinarini. Yeah, man. <laughs> that, that was one of those moments. It's unforgivable, honestly. Yeah. Unforgivable. Champs. Um, you know who I'm going? Sean Dyche. Real men. Spun the block on Burnley again. Real men. And Nil. bounced company's head off Real the canvas. <laughs> I love Real it. Men. I love it. Real and he men. did it in like typical Burnley fashion. fashion. Yeah. Jamming Calvert-Lewin yeah. goal, then backs to the wall job, defend yeah. for your lives. Yeah. Even afterwards, he was like, yeah, bit of old school play yeah. that. Hard nose. Do you I know what we it. call that? We call that the Great British yeah. Dream. That's what we call that. That is what we'll get your lip back. TGB, lad. Um, yeah. um, I've got a champ for um, Bill Bow. They oh, won their yeah. first trophy in 45 40, years. Yeah, 40, um, one of the Williams brothers was involved in the assist. Oh no, for winning the pen. Oh, um, wow. Sorry. That was a, uh, that that an absolute that screamer. That was, that, mate. Like a prop. Mickey Van Der Ven. Proper screamer. That v, was, mate. V, v. Proper screamer. You'll like this. <laughs> that was hey, a they don't make centre-backs like this in England. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what foot is he? What foot is he? Left. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because he hit it with Lefty. his left. Look at that. Wait, just bear with us one second whilst we watch this. This is quality. 2-1. Fair play to them. Camel, you Spurs. From the corner Comes from the well. corner. Brennan Johnson, edge of the box. It's that Pedro Porro goes out to... Gives it back to Brennan. Brennan to Sonny. Sonny doesn't know if he wants to shoot. Van der Ven says, give it to me. Oh, bro, hold bastard. that. Absolutely. Thunder bastard. bastard. Yeah. yeah, brav. Absolutely love that, man. I've got a question. You see with Dutch, you see that, with, when did Van Dijk stop taking free kicks? Because remember back at Celtic, like, that was his thing. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> when did he, when did he think, stop I doing that? he gave that off at, at Southampton. Southampton. Yeah. Wow, that was a rocket. <laughs> That's a great finish. Yeah, he rocketed Great that. touch. By the way, what was the uh, Peterborough score today? I don't know. Because you Ferguson, know what was a Ferguson, very yeah. interesting observation. Fra- Fra- Fragments going to watch his son. Mate, do you know what else I've got? What? Hey. Son hype, blood, yeah? Fragments going to watch his son. You mean United are playing Liverpool and you're going to watch the posh? Nah. Yeah, I mean, he gonna, probably has nah, been stung nah, a few man. times when he's watched Oh, the, shit, he won. They won, yeah, they, they won, they won. Yeah. All right, fair. That's, that's champ fair. behavior. That's I'll champ behavior. That, that, that's champ. That's champ, champ behavior. You, you <laughs> up to champ real quick. Well done, well done. Just a side <laughs> note, did you see Liverpool's under-18s against Man United's under-18s? Oh, that was it 9-1? Nine, 9-1, nine nine one, that stinks, that, eh? That's a dud. That's, that's a, a proper dud, unfortunately. That's a get-back for the 7-0. Oh, in some way, yeah, somehow, yeah, yeah, yeah. it counts. I mean, it does. I'll never forget that 7 Reparation. I had, um, it's like a PR champ, I can't lie, but... The fact that Cole Gallagher, is, I'm sorry, Cole Gallagher, Cole Palmer is like in the running for Golden Boot is hilarious to me. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Wait, how many goals has he got? 16? Like 16 or, yeah, I think he hasn't, he didn't score today, so he's on 16 goals. He's got how many pens? He's got like eight or something? Yeah, I half seven of them. Pens. Yeah, I think that's seven pens. Um, there was another champ I had. Oh, uh, I've forgotten it. I've forgotten it. I've forgotten Are these it. like obscure champs? Oh, Trussard. No, no just, Trussard. Someone, uh, just Trussard. someone who you want to give a shout out to Trussard, uh, this week. you are a champion. Trussard, you're mm. a champion. Scoring the third goal? No, not for scoring the third goal. The they celebrate. booed him. They booed him. He did the boo again, boo again. He stood there like this, <laughs> looking like Squirtle. And then he posted, are you not entertained? Are you taking the piss? <laughs> he is a champion. I, I, you know, I wasn't familiar with his game. I uh, thought he was like one of these nice guys. I respect it because there was no reason for them to boo, um, to boo you. I respect what? that. No, there is a reason for them to Why be Why is there a reason? What do you they mean? The paid. guy was requesting transfer when they were having one of their best got, seasons in are, the middle of the bri- season. Are Brighton not a selling are, club? Uh, they are a selling club. They didn't sell. It was, I remember the Zerbis uh, just came in. They yeah. were flying yeah, under yeah, him. He's he just scored a hat trick. trick. And it was like, out of nowhere, I want to leave. I want to move. It was like, bro, your contract's finishing at the end of the season. You're going to leave anyway. Selling club. Mm, make the money. Play. You went Arsenal, but... Selling club. Make the money. Make the money, man. I don't know. But yeah, man. Champs. Yeah, we've done f- two of them. <laughs> yeah, Kevin De Bruyne and Arsenal as a team, all together, lad. Yeah. What Kevin they did De Bruyne, to Brighton, lad, was professional yeah. and methodical. Yeah. And uh, what winning teams do. And Kevin De Bruyne, because you're just the boogeyman, lad, yeah. aren't you? You just yeah. do the job, lad. 
Yeah, KDB's that second finish as well, left foot. I think honestly, that to me, right, his left footed finishing is not respected as much as it should be, lad. Mm. He scored bags goals and it's 30 goals on his left foot for, do you know what was a, for uh, Man City. Speaking of funny goals, do you know what was um, a weird one this week? James Ward Prowse. <laughs> Straight oh, he's got Olympico, yeah, he's got yeah. Olympico. He's got an Olympico. The wind yeah, just yeah. said, here you go, yeah. I'll give you this. It was a windy day, a yeah, windy like, weekend as well. Play, like, he scored an Olympico. Do you reckon he went... Bro, yes, he yeah. did. He plays he's golf, isn't he? Yeah, bro, he plays also, golf. He that's like, what his set piece, he got his leg ready like this, lad, and went, yeah. like that, lad, and just slotted it. <laughs> bro, I'm telling this you. part nine, let me just... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. no those, are, those are good champs and good duds. Um, Champs back this week, so that means our next episode is due to be emotional. There's going to be a lot of football to discuss. Mm. Um, right, well, you still haven't hit 1K on the yeah, episode smash as well. the like Smash button, the like button on the way. Smash the like button. Um, but yeah, man. That's another episode. Like, share, subscribe. We will be back next week. Mm -hmm. And yeah, man. Till then. Adios. Peace.